We can show you what they've been at home this year, which is a juggernaut. 27 touchdowns and four in 11 games. Ooh. This is not like it's a four-game sample. Like, this dude over 11 games is putting up those type of numbers. And by the way, they are played big games. He's still showing up. I talked about it before the year started that if Dak played well this year, he was going to sign a contract that makes people's eyes pop this offseason. He's getting it. Are they good enough to take this gift they've been given and make a run at least to the NFC Championship game? Are they good enough to do it? You know, you guys, I'm just going to jump straight into the Dallas Cowboys right here, right now, because this team just found a way to not only put themselves at first in the division, but also give themselves the number two seed, which means they're going to play at least two home games before the NFC Championship. As we all know, this changes absolutely everything for what the Dallas Cowboys can accomplish this postseason, especially with the way we've seen Dak and CD be able to find a connection and this defense really be able to turn it on over these past two weeks. But even with them being the number two seed and with them playing as well as they are right now, this team still isn't playing to the level we all know they can. And if they can find a way to do that in the playoffs, this team can be just about anyone. But before we get into why I believe that, if you like Dallas Cowboys content, just like this make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Cowboys videos for the remainder of this season Okay, so to get back on topic with the Dallas Cowboys, this team came into the season with a lot of question marks surrounding Mike McCarthy and how his play calling would look. And so far throughout the season, there's been a ton of ups and downs. We started the year off slow, and then the offense started to look unstoppable. And now the offensive play calling looks iffy here and there, and it doesn't look as fluid as it once did. Now, the good thing about this is that the Cowboys still had the same talent on the team, and they still had the same guy calling the play, so we know they can get back to that level. Mike McCarthy is just going to have to put his head down and do it. The reason why I'm so confident in the Cowboys being able to do this is simply because of Dak Prescott. Dak got so much hate this past offseason for throwing the interceptions and not playing his greatest football, but man has he proved every single hater wrong this season with the way he's able to play. He's finally back into his full form of getting out of the pocket and extending plays with his legs, and that's opened up so much for this offense, and it's made this offense one of the better offenses in the entire league. I mean, the Cowboys offense is currently top five in total yards per game, top five in passing yards per game, top three in third downs converted, and of course, top three in the most important stat of all, points per game, which just shows how dominant the offense really has been over the course of the season. Now, as well as Dak is playing, I don't want to give all the credit to him because this is a team sport and some players on this offense definitely have helped him out. The first one obviously being C.D. Lamb with the way he is able to dominate week in and week out regardless of the opponent, whether he's motioned into the slot or motioned out of the backfield or motioned out to the outside receiver position, he finds a way to get it done and he finds a way to consistently get open to give Dak somewhere to go with the ball. So for anyone who said that he wasn't a receiver one looks absolutely stupid right now because he's not just a receiver one, he's one of the best receiver ones in the entire NFL. He's currently second in receiving yards, only behind Tyreek Hill, and he's first in total yards out of all receivers, which just proves how good he's actually been. And then of course you also have Brandon Cooks who when you give him a chance he makes plays happen and he's been a pretty solid receiver too with all things considered. I think the Cowboys earlier on in the season didn't know exactly how to use him but now they do and he's made some key plays especially in this past game against the Lions to help the Cowboys win. And then of course you can't forget about that guy Jake Ferguson who has really came along this year and turned himself into a really good receiving threat while also being really good in the run game and pass block game as well. So you have three really good weapons for Dak to throw to, and with the way Dak is currently operating this offense, regardless of the circumstances, they have the ability to carry us if need be. Now, I will say the offensive line has had their ups and downs throughout the year, and so has our run game because of the offensive line not playing their greatest, which is something I don't think is going to change much heading into the playoffs because, I mean, it's week 17, but the O-line should be fully healthy in the playoffs, which will maximize our chances for success. So as long as Mike McCarthy can call the plays like we know he can, and he makes sure that this offense is pass first, not run first, this offense will be able to score against pretty much anybody they play against, and that's what you need in a championship team. But, of course, offenses don't win championships, defenses do, and while the defense has had their ups and downs throughout the season so far, just like the offense, they have came along a little bit in these past two weeks and have made me feel a lot more confident. 
First off, the guy you gotta talk about is Micah Parsons because, man, he can literally do anything you ask him to do, whether it's play off-ball linebacker or play defensive end. You see him getting back in the backfield, sacking the quarterback, or making crazy plays in the run game, and he, by himself, can completely change the complex of a game. So to have that elite of a guy on your defense is going to cause issues for opposing offenses, and then when you have a guy like Demarcus Lawrence to pair with him, it starts to get pretty scary. I mean, I know Demarcus Lawrence isn't the same pass rush that he once was due to his older age, but man, he is one of the best run defenders in the entire NFL, if not the very best run stopper at the defensive end position. I feel like every single game the Cowboys play in, I see him in the backfield on run plays, making things happen, which is something that I think gets overlooked, but it definitely should not be. In short yardage situations, he continuously comes through for us, and he's been the reason why we've won a lot of the games that we've won. And then of course, you have Oso Digazua, who in his third season has came along greatly and became a premier defensive tackle in this league and then we're also going to be getting back Jonathan Hankins for the playoffs which means we're going to have a fully healthy defensive line which should hold up against just about anyone but of course you also have depth pieces like Sam Williams, Dante Fowler, Mozzie Smith, Dorrance Armstrong, Chauncey Goldston and all of those guys that can also rotate in and make plays which makes the Cowboys D-line in my opinion the deepest D-line in the league right now but as we all know even though the defensive line is so so good the linebackers for the Cowboys have been an issue you all year and especially over this past month of football and they do worry me a little bit. Damone Clark just hasn't made the leap that I thought he was going to make in his second year and while Marquise Bell I think is a really good player he just doesn't have the frame and the size to play linebacker at an extremely high level. So while those two guys are solid I don't think they're great which is why I think we should mix in Micah at middle linebacker a little bit because if Micah is at middle linebacker he's always going to have a chance to make a play on something and in my opinion you want your best player to have a chance to make a play on every play, so it makes sense for him to be there on early downs. And then I'm also pretty high on what this secondary has been able to do recently as well. Drawn Bland obviously hasn't had many pick sixes, but outside of a few plays, he's played pretty good overall, and I think Stefan Gilmore has played extremely well overall, but the guy that I was worried most about was Jordan Lewis in the slot, but man, he probably just had his best game of the year against the Lions, which is really, really good to see at this time of the year. So you got three corners that you can trust, and then you also have J. Ron Kearse, Malik Cooker, and Donovan Wilson as a pretty solid safety trio. And I'd also like to throw Yonway Thomas in there because he's a really solid player as well. So I don't think putting him on the field would be a bad idea either. So when I lay all of this out in front of me, I see a defense that when they're playing to their full potential can shut down a lot of offenses. And then on the other side of the ball, I see an offense that as long as Mike McCarthy doesn't go brain dead, can score against just about anybody. I see a team that I truly do believe could win it all. Now, of course, we're most likely going to have to beat the 49ers to get to the Super Bowl, which is going to be a hard task. But I mean, you never know. It's the playoffs and it's the NFL. And if the Cowboys come to play and the 49ers don't, the Cowboys could definitely win that game. But that's just just my opinion so I'm still curious to know what you guys think in the comments below so let me know your thoughts down there and with that being said I'll catch all of you guys in the next video